first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Shafakat Sadiq. Sadiq Ji, please, Shafakat. It's Shafakat. And uh, uh, I have did my MS in Information Security with BS in Information Technology and uh, Associate Engineering in Electronics with a DART specialization. And uh, you may contact uh, in case of any, uh, after that session, in case of any query. Uh, why UAVs? Very important topic. Why UAVs? And the NMAND, uh, you everybody knows the NMAND air vehicle is an aircraft with air, uh, air crew remote and replaced by computer systems and uh, communication medium widely used in military and civil applications. And uh, in military, its role is uh, uh, as a surveillance and uh, uh, some uh, destruction roles also over there uh, as the military uses. And in civil application, you can see it can be used as photographing uh, with power line inspections, customer exercise, calamity monitoring, and police and traffic agencies, forestry, and everywhere. Now, even a pizza delivery boy uses the drones uh, to deliver a pizza from one. Um, one right to the customers. And, and, and in military, uh, military, everybody knows that security activities. Confidentially, integrity, availability, non reputation, authentication. Shafakat, Shafakat, so, sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. Um, there's a little bit of a lag on the sound. Um, do you want to try to uh, maybe shut off your your you know your camera? Maybe that will improve the connection a little bit for the sound. Um, if not, we can try again. I'm, there was just like a lag in the. The last 15 seconds were very hard to hear. Sorry to interrupt. I can see you better now. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, and I was just suggesting because of the internet lag, uh, sometimes uh, it can help if. Um, if uh, like if I turn off my video, sometimes it helps with that. But uh, we can try again. See if see if the connection is good now. Oh. Am I am I audible now? Yes, perfect. It sounds great right now. Yeah. Okay, I have uh, switch off my uh, camera so that uh, everybody can listen to me, and my voice uh, doesn't cut off. Very so, good, it sounds very clear. Uh, so uh, I was saying that uh, I'm more focused on the telecommunication security, uh, mm -hmm. along with the, all the physical, logical application and operational security with the ethic, uh, authentication and non-reputation, availability and integrity, along with confidentiality. These are the security activities, but the all everything focus on telecom because that is more vulnerable uh, when the data is in transit. So if we talk about the types of UAVs, I have identified UAVs are mature and commercials and militaries. I have, uh, uh, I have formulated a table that can show, you can see uh, uh, that can show flight time, training, weight, sensor installed, speed, attitude, altitude, control range, and autopilot features, weather resistant, and secure parts, along with ground, ground control stations. But the more important and more focused we are on this security mechanism. In MHR, security mechanism is not implemented, and in commercial, that is limited, but in military drones, that is data diversify. Uh, if we talk about some occurrences uh, that uh, 
uh, in the I have not included in the recent past, but a previous past <laughs> uh, in Iraq 2009, and Twitter broke into the um, to a U.S. military drone and uploaded the video on its network. And uh, in September 2011, at for base in Nvidia, that was a, a key logging virus infected the U.S. military UAV fleet. But the but the in 2011, Iranian forces captured RQ-170, and after three years of reverse engineering, same was built by Iran. That was the more, more alarming thing, because that was the transfer of technology, and the transfer of technology to the foe, transfer of technology to the enemy. That is more, more dangerous than anything you can say, but that happens, and many more that is not reported. If we talk about UAV communication, let me get into a, a bit, a bit, a bit a little details on the communication side. Uh, UAV has a ground control station and itself the unmanned aerial vehicle. When we talk about the uh, ground control station, that communication link established between UAV and control station. With all the basic sensors, aviations, and payloads are uh, are connected with UAVs. Typically, UAVs uh, operates like this. I uh, have uh, shown in your in, in this slide, and that the ground control station up to the line of sight. It is connected uh, with directly with the ground control station. And uh, uh, if that goes up to 20 kilometers where the line of sight gets off or somewhere other reason, uh, that get out of line of sight, that is connected to the satellite. That may be GPS satellite or maybe that is a communication satellite. There should be another satellite I have not included over here. There should be another satellite that communicate with the UV uh, with the ground station. But uh, in some UAVs, this connection has been made with the GPS satellite and a routine messages has been run inside the G in, inside that specific UAV. So uh, the UAV that, that travels to somewhere and after that completion of its task, it returns back to the ground control station or at specific area where that has to be arrived. Uh, I was talking about IRQ with the Iranian. That was the Russian made, uh, that was the Russian made Avatavosa system that had the GPS satellite network systems and uh, shows and uh, you know in communication, you know in communication the receiver will connect with, with the receiver with, will connect with those uh, uh, those transmitters that have the heavy transmission, and that ever to the system in Tehran that was transmitting high transmission with the GPS satellite, showing that I am here, I am giving you the GPS signals, and after that, and after that he that specific system ever to the I am calling that that was the Russian made. And uh, they say that they they and they they send a message to them. They send a message to them that it's Kandahar Air Base, and you can land over here. You have completed your mission, and that was landed, and they they and they uh, tie them with chains. Uh, pictures are also available on the media. So that. Uh, that are the weak area. What are the weak areas? Uh, data in transit, I have already uh, discussed that. That is the data in transit is more, more, you can say, uh, uh, that no. is more dangerous. So the last thing is that Ranshat's too. He was wounded, but we took care of him. I gave him blood and transfusion. Take the power, I ain't done. What's your deal? 
When the GPS globing system weak areas are there, so potential attacks are GPS spoofing, jamming, parameter based attacks, hardware security, and link integrity with the link availability and reliability. Sister and my wife. That's why. Let's get into no. the. Also, I leave us know that I'm collaborating with you. Don't risk it. You don't have much time. You get the captain out of the Lebanon as soon as possible. Let's get into the detail of MAV link protocol that has been used by commercial drones. These are the MAV link messages protocol. Send data bitwise. Followed by the checksum error correction. You know, the maximum data length of the MAV link is uh, 8 byte. And uh, I have shown over here uh, the start of the frame with the payload length and the sequence number with the system ID and component ID and message detail ID with payload and checksum. And th these totals are 263 bytes that are sent by ground control station to UAV. But uh, if there is no payload or empty payload, then that will be 8 bit. But every, every message has been sent off minimum 8 byte to 263 bytes. So what are the operations that uh, I have uh, created a uh, operational setup simulators over here. Uh, the communication between the ground control station and the drones was over the radio link. But on simulator, I have um, and uh, um, connect a drone like this, which also acts as a virtual machine. And that was connected over TCP MAV link protocol. How that was connected? A signal running uh, UAV simulator. That is software in the loop running over here that, 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 acts, that acts as a ground control station and along with that, we can connect, we can use MAV link protocol, what I have uh, uh, further explained you just before. That is the, that is the ground control station pilot, good pilot software that has been widely used, that has been widely used by different, uh, and different, Okay, okay, okay. Message exchange. If we talk about uh, the message exchange between UAV and ground control station, if we talk about UAV and ground control station, I have given it IP one control and ground control station. So the uh, UAV send messages to the ground control station like this, that is the uh, status text and uh, parameter values with the routine test, the, the routine A and routine B have defined a, a few four to five messages sent by ground control station to UAV at every uh, five to seven seconds and heartbeat, you can say a heartbeat has been sent by ground control station to UAV, like this. And at, at uh, if we uh, open the packet of uh, that specific, uh, I, have, uh, I have analysis that packet, that what the data has been sent by uh, this uh, ground control station to UAV. And uh, with that, I have analysis uh, made that uh, comparison with the MAV link framework. And, uh, so, and that shows that the starting of STX is like this, that is, has been highlighted over here, starting from 8 bit of FE, and then and the length and sequence, and after that, uh, system ID and component ID, and message ID, and uh, then the payload, and then the checksum. So 
that message is that message is the more more important for us and that can be used uh, to send uh, to any send any uav that is working on mav link protocol that can be uh, that is hackable uh, so what we have to do we have to find the critical messages that that being sent from ground control station to uh, to uav to the drone and i have identified a few messages and these were the uh, i have uh, on a, i have named them the critical messages set mode to armed and that switch on switch on the drone on the and then return to launch and after that disarm disarm is the most uh, critical one that switch off the motor of the uh, drone uh, and inverted flight stabilize mode enable uh, system status sensors and details and uh, circular mode uh, on and set manual mode and move to point x and that is uh, i think that is the uh, very crucial message and that uh, you send uh, drone a message that you switch to manual mode and then move to my point where i have given to the coordinates of that specific point and move towards that point uh, and uh, if that drone uh, travel from the, its ground control central station uh, towards uh, uh, towards outer outer side of that uh, communication uh, uh, communication station then that will not not ever be uh, accessible uh, after that unless let's talk about the exploitation lab if we, talk, if we talk about the exploitation lab then the exploitation lab has been uh, uh, already uh, Uh, show you uh, has been defined like virtual machines two virtual machines one is acting as drone and one is acting as ground control station and connected over citadel and um, mav link protocol i have already i have also included a android set that uh, and that was a tablet that acts as a ground control station application of our pilot also available uh, that can connect to, to the drones uh, Um, and more mostly uh, people on uh, commercial sites they are using these types of applications and after that if we uh, we talk about uh, create uh, attacks how how can we create a specific attack on uh, how can we create a specific attack message that was message was being crafted uh, in scape our uh, uh, in the linux environment uh, uh, with kali linux and uh, 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 with the declaration of data string and uh, after that converting the string <clears> to the packet and exadm uh, uh, that message has been collected from uh, wireshark the critical messages has been identified and data has been collected from there and crafted is our own own packet and sent to the uh, drone network and that has been captured and uh, <coughs> If I, I have uh, I have shown you a decent uh, picture of that uh, old pilot that is on uh, I have in Kali Linux I have identified I have created the message uh, that was sent over one three four to the drone that was disarmed and when I have sent that message that that becomes on mean its its motor starts on and it starts traveling it start walking and uh, stabilize mode that is the second attack that has been launched as uh, on stabilize mode when i send message uh, to the drone that was traveling towards 
and that specific where its nose was there, it headed towards that and traveling towards there. And then on guided mode, I have to send two, two messages. Uh, one message uh, switch to guided mode and then second message switch towards guided mode and second message and travel towards uh, that specific coordinates what I have given to them. So that was the second message that I moved to the point X. The point X I have already explained you that was the coordinates I have given there. So, and the drone, and this was the, that is very, that says that switching to the guided mode and then it was traveling towards that specific line of sight, what was given to him. Sí, pero ya ves que si dice update 8 y 12 meses, entonces, como no tenemos certeza de hacia dónde... And uh, these are the projects that are being used by old pilot and uh, using the MAV link protocol. 13 companies are using MAV link protocol that is vulnerable to, uh, that is vulnerable to be hacked. And uh, so uh, the communication uh, is required to be uh, uh, secured for that specific. And, you know, strong uh, network understanding is required for that uh, to accomplish this task, task. and uh, average programming skill is enough. I have uh, write the code in Python, um, but uh, it can be done in J J JavaScript or uh, some other language also. And uh, hacking techniques uh, is key for all these things. And um, uh, analytical analysis skill is required because uh, data, and data packets uh, uh, defiltering and after that data packets filtering and after that uh, creation of data was the most important thing. And uh, of course, uh, seven layers of OSI and, uh, and what the data communication protocols, how they are interacting with each other is the key. Fantastic. Uh um, Shafaqat, this is a incredible topic. I mean, uh, I can see behind you uh, in your background, you have the NATO AGS unmanned aer aerial vehicle and all the components there are specified. So those are all the technologies. And uh, I mean, I think unfortunately war sometimes brings a lot of technological advancement very quickly. Um, yes. I, I think, you know, uh, there's already a lot of investment in you know, using UAVs for good, you know, for shipping, for transportation, for moving people from one place to the other. And uh, obviously a key component is security because I mean, once we have thousands of, you know, flying cars transporting people, imagine if somehow they could be hacked or if something happens. I mean, I don't know how many simultaneous people could be flying across the planet on UAVs <laughs> at the same time. So it's so critical, uh, the security that, uh, that you know, prevents anything from, from uh, being taken over. Um, when do you see, because we already have autonomous systems, mostly autonomous systems for the defense area. Uh, and I think a lot of private companies are working on autonomous. Uh, when do you foresee this technology being like an Uber, where you call up Uber, but it's Uber over the Uber over the air, and it takes you from your suburban place to the center of the city in 12 minutes. Uh, how do you see that technology coming along? So uh, we have to. Uh, what can I say? We have to see everything uh, in security parameters also. Whenever, whenever the, uh, we are creating a new invention or creating a new uh, product, uh, we just focus on the operational requirements. 
never never focus on and the security parameters but the vulnerability and whatever other and uh, other things that we have to do with that specific um, product and whenever that product being launched and uh, uh, whatever uh, the military or the civil organizations are um, doing um, they focus on the operational they never focus on the security of that product because autonomously when you can see you now uh, flying cars and even from the shipyard towards all the city the big big heavy heavy trawlers are traveling and they are autonomously traveling and whenever there is a bit a bit a little bit flaws in in that specific uh, uh, vehicle or that specific sensors that uh, has been installed in that vehicle that doesn't work properly or being hacked by someone that that will we will uh, suffer and we will not only we will suffer i think the whole mankind will suffer because uh, i have already told that when it gets into uh, uh, when it gets into the hands of enemy then uh, it's very dangerous excellent um well um i'd like to give the opportunity to our students we have currently um shafakat we have 136 people watching live uh, i'm sure some of you have questions that you would like to ask i'd like uh, if you see the reactions down at the bottom of your screen, it's kind of like a smiley face. If you click on that, you can raise your hand and I'd be happy to call upon you. I have there uh, the first person that raised their hands. Um, La Kika Sese, uh, please um, unmute if you can turn on your, your, your video. And uh, welcome, thank you for your question. You might not want to take another day for the rest okay. of the day. Yeah. Thank you very much. My, I'm lucky from Liberia. Uh, it's an opportunity and a pleasure to join this team and to see other colleagues, other students from other parts of the world. Uh, my question to our presenter today is, I really want to know, is this an acronym UAV or is just a name? In that case, then what does it mean? Thank you. It's a quadcopter. Thank you very much. It's a quadcopter. You can say it's a commercial vehicle. Uh, uh, I have, uh, I have uh, also uh, got a chance uh, to uh, analysis uh, to analyze the communication of uh, other uh, UAVs. But uh, that specific uh, research I am going to share with you people. That is uh, the commercial drones widely available in the market. That is not the specific that you can see on my behind my. Okay. I would like to uh, quickly intervene uh, before we get to uh, the next questions. I am Dr. Val Sin, a curriculum engineer at Atlantic International University. And uh, I would like to commend you, uh, Shafakat, for a presentation that proves to be extremely outstanding. And we're talking about a field that is uh, very, very in demand all over the world, across uh, the whole wide world. Uh, however, when I uh, listen to you very closely, I do understand that uh, there are some very, very technical skills that are required to uh, really master a topic and uh, manage a wireless communication very effectively, very efficiently. Uh, for example, you mentioned uh, the first requirement is to uh, have a very strong understanding of uh, network uh, protocols. Uh, this is not something that the average user uh, 
would really be equipped with. You're also talking about uh, programming skills. I remember my uh, first years in uh, the world of computer science, we are talking about roughly 30 years ago, uh, I was really afraid. Uh, when it comes to programming, we are talking about a field that is very, very, uh, you know, tricky when it comes to the parameters to understand what to do here, the algorithms to use, you know, to uh, program uh, very uh, properly. Hacking techniques, uh, this is not something that the average user would have. Uh, so my question to you right now, Shafaka, let's uh, briefly focus on the average user, people who uh, use computers, they are involved in uh, the uh, wireless communication. However, they do not really possess the specific knowledge when it comes to the ins and outs, the pros and the cons. What could you briefly recommend to uh, the average user to do in order to uh, master wireless communication and particularly avoid hacking, which is very, very scary. Uh, people use hacking all over the world to get into credit cards, to get into network, home network, and so forth and so on. What would you very specifically recommend, uh, Shafaka, to the average user? Thank you for the, for the question, please. Sir. Sir, uh, I would recommend uh, if we talk about the uh, wireless communication and uh, mastering in the wireless communication, uh, I would like to say that I have spent near about uh, 15 years over the wireless communication and uh, playing with the transmitters and receivers and modifying them and, and what and what not. But uh, if we talk about uh, uh, if you are eager to earn and learn anything, that is, uh, regardless of your age, you can get into that and uh, uh, reading a good book and keeping your mind on focus, that specific thing, you can get it. And right. uh, uh, that is the attitude. The second thing, sir, uh, the, that was the programming skill. Uh, uh, the programming skill, you know, uh, over the night, uh, the programming skill over the night, we see a new version has been launched and a new programming language has arrived and a new, 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 new. Yes. Yes. new. Yes. But I have, I have, I have, this. I have, I am, and now I was building a, a DevOps, uh, doing a DevOps uh, pipelines for some organization and I have seen that the basic language C++ is the must, the mother of all the languages yes, because yes. that starts from the ba basics and it, it that builds builds a bit builds, but a little bit changes every language is a script a might a, a little bit change comes there that can be helpful from the internet. And mm -hmm. I think that is an, enough uh, for that uh, specific. And third one question, that was the hacking techniques. Sir, um, there are two approaches. One approach is hackers, and second is information security researchers. And uh -huh. that is the attitude. What, what we say is the attitude is information security. Nothing Nothing is ethical in hacking. I always say in hacking, nothing is ethical. You are doing unethical. Okay? Ethical is only when I, I got permission uh, from you that can I get into your computer and I get into your mobile. That is the ethically. But I, I say that is with, uh, with the permission of the other, that is ethical. But ethical hacking other than that is nothing. All right. Yes, on the, on the second edge, that is the attitude that we build. That is the attitude. 
second thing that is ethically what we are doing what we are doing ethically that is information security researcher i have i have uh, i have made a research on this communication protocol and i have sent to the uh, to that specific mav link uh, organization and they they code it and says that we are going to be uh, getting secure this with the version 2 and they will come and what happens that uh, our attitude shows okay, uh, that we are doing ethically or unethical. So hacking, uh, that design kid is that uh, we uh, draw someone somewhere, uh, passwords, uh, sniffing and other things. Um, but I think um, that the attitude we have to adopt, that is that should be a positive one. And, All right. uh, <laughs> Thank you very, very, very much. I really appreciate your uh, answer. The uh, bottom line here is just constant homework. Be on the watch constantly to see what is new and, you know, uh, getting into the practice every single instant. Thank you very much again. We don't want to have Dr. Issa Mohamed suffer any longer. He's been having his hand up. Just turn on in both your microphone. Your camera is already on. Just turn your microphone on, uh, Dr. Issa, and the floor is yours now for your question. Your mic is still off, Dr. Issa, please. Uh, hello. hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thanks for a wonderful presentation. Uh, we are very interested in the lectures. My question is I want to ask. There are some challenges that hinder the wireless mobile communication technologies. I want to know whether there is a, a measure that, that is to put in place to improve the challenges of this uh, wireless mobile communication. Thanks so much. So uh, sir, Shafakat, sir, I think he's referring sir. to the, uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, the sir, lack of coverage. I, I would like to answer this, Down. sir. Go ahead. Sir, because, uh, um, you know, sir, um, there are multiple challenges that has been involved uh, with, the, uh, with, with those devices that have less power and let, that have less computational power. And- Dr. Moran. So, Fine. So, uh, no. so, so, sir, uh, uh, the main thing is that we have to, with some, we have to define uh, a lightweight protocols for the communication with the, with the secure, secure, with the secure. That is the uh, needed of the era. Thank you very much. Uh, going now to uh, Jonas Abdi. Your microphone is off, Jonas. Would you please? Okay. There we go. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Safakat, for the presentation. Uh, but there is, uh, my question is, it's not a questionnaire uh, actually, uh, but there is a rumor that uh, hacking is done by the uh, programming uh, people or staff. So if this is uh, true, is there any uh, data that supports this uh, thing? Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, sir, in some sense, you can say it's right, <laughs> because uh, 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 very sadly, I have to, uh, say that, uh, in my opinion, uh, and people put the back doors. People that are on the auditing the security of that specific system, and they are verifying the security of the system, they put some, uh, some back door over there and to earn money, they come back and then says that, they, you see, this is the back door over there. But, but, but Microsoft itself is doing very good. So, sir, uh, sir uh, Yunus, 
uh, I would like to uh, recommend uh, that uh, whenever you use, uh, you use your computer, uh, uh, you should uh, keep all the updates on and uh, try to uh, uh, try to uh, uh, try uh, don't try to uh, uncheck or uh, or uh, leave behind the Microsoft uh, uh, security parameters. Put them on on the top. After the third party's application, you can use third party, but uh, recommendation is Microsoft one. Thank you very much, uh, the Microsoft parameters to keep on uh, every you. time you use your computer. But uh, as Thank we you. have several other hands up, uh, we want to continue. Uh, going right now to uh, Dr. Alakimu Diallo for your question or comment, please. Remember to turn your mic on. Dr. Alakimu, your microphone is still off. Okay, as Dr. Alakimu is uh, managing to fix his microphone, we're going to Albert Sanusi. Hello, all participants. I thank you. You listen to me? Yes, Diallo. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, this is it is important subject. I I am some question on hacking technique in regarding and 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 thank controlled by wireless as drone. Today it is important. By example, if if it is possible now, it is possible to have some equipment, some hardware which can control. In a, control a drone, a drone, by example, another person in another place, if this person can control a drone, a drone and uh, without, uh, without a proprietary control. So that somebody in another place can take the control a drone and uh, control a drone, if it is possible or, or, or not today, by hardware available in market. Okay, sir, uh, you was uh, not really uh, audible, but I got your uh, question a bit. Uh, that is not a easy technique. Uh, what I have presented over here uh, today, uh, I I ensure you that uh, uh, with my all the fellows, uh, uh, you can't get into even that networks, that is not the first time you get into that specific network. And after that, getting into the network, uh, you craft your you craft your packets and send over there. And uh, it's not an easy method to uh, that everybody get into that specific. And not only the specific hardware is required for that task, but uh, uh, some uh, high level skills are also required. Yes, and that's it. <laughs> Jonas? It's your turn now, Jonas Apti. Uh, we are losing Jonas. <laughs> uh, Dr. Ricardo, there is a question coming up uh, about whether uh, this presentation will be uh, available for download or for viewing. What is your stand on that, uh, Dr. Gonzalez? Sure, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, we plan to make the presentations available in the student section. Um, so uh, when you log in as a student uh, in the Merlin Media Center, uh, we plan to add those uh, maybe within a few days after the presentation. So you're welcome to view it again or in case you missed part of it. Thank you for the clarification. Agmela Shimeza, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, I joined you a bit late because of connectivity in Zimbabwe. So I wanted to kindly ask for a presentation later so that I can go through what uh, is been discussed and shared with others. Uh, and if the, the chance to appreciate 
um, the discussions. I followed yes, but I could not pick up everything. So I wanted to kindly ask for the presentation so that I can look at it later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Agnella. Yes, definitely we'll make it available to you. Uh, just give Thanks. us a few days and, uh, and they'll be available in the student section. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay. Um, go ahead. Wireless communication, uh, hacking programming, a very interesting topic being presented right now by uh, Shafakat Siddiqui from uh, Pakpatan, Pak Pakistan, and uh, we do understand our students are really into it. Going now to uh, John Tamba Yambasu for your question or comment, please. Don't forget to turn your microphone on. Go ahead, John. I'm so much happy. I'm really blessed today. I'm so much happy about the topic we discuss on. I've learned a lot. I just want to say thank you to all of you, all the board directors that organized this wonderful uh, meeting. I'm so much blessed. I really appreciate. I'm following up and I've learned a lot today. Just that uh, in Africa, especially in Sierra Leone, we have a lot and lot and lot of issue with uh, networking, this and hacking system, a lot of for four stars and other things. But I've learned something today that will help me so much. So I'm really blessed. I want to say thank you to you all. Thank you, John. Thank you. And uh, I just wanted to share, uh, uh, you know, this wireless communication is almost getting to a point where it, it needs to be a human right. I mean, this, you know, all these drone operations, the unmanned aerial vehicles, they all depend on wireless communication. And uh, there's still, unfortunately, about 2 billion people on the planet today yes that don't have access to, you know, wireless communication, to broadband, to internet. And uh, I was wondering, uh, Shafakat, um, have you heard of the um, technology where broadband is being beamed down directly from space, from satellites to handsets? I think it's called uh, Space Mobile, where they have a satellite that has 300 mile, 300 square mile, um, no, not three, yeah, uh, no, 300,000 uh, square mile coverage. It's a satellite with an array of about 5,000 square feet up in space that transmits wireless broadband. So in theory, within a couple of years, they expect to launch about 168 satellites to have worldwide coverage. And with that, eliminate the lack of wireless access worldwide. Um, so just a quick comment, and then Dr. Valtine, Please call upon the next uh, student. Thank you. Uh, before we actually call on the next student, there is a question that is popping up on the chat uh, screen uh, that is critical. Uh, the, the attendee uh, recognized that uh, he started late uh, getting into uh, uh, this session. However, the question that can be the, 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 the answer can be important or interesting for everybody. How can we know, how can we figure out if our WhatsApp and email are subjects to hacking? What is your take on that, Shafakat? If our WhatsApp and email are also vulnerable subjects to hacking, uh, sir, uh, sir we, we will have another session on this that is very 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 uh, that is uh, you can say that is not a, a glass of water that is a complete complete river or ocean we have to deep in inside mm -hmm. but uh, whenever you uh, you see your mobile is giving any type of uh, irregularities Mm -hmm. you should you should uh, keep in mind that someone is there that is doing some some funky business yes even uh, uh, we all are uh, i am seeing all the people we are all at that age where uh, our small uh, kids 
uh, install games inside that uh, our mobile phone and uh, uh, and then they forget and even we can't see that my son has installed a new game and provides all the rights uh, to a third party uh, to check whatever inside my mobile, even my uh, pictures, my data, my phone book, and everything. So uh, we should, uh, uh, I recommend uh, uh, after one year at least, we should uh, reset our mobile because uh, backend, if you uninstall the applications, even then they kept the data and uh, make a back roll and send data towards their specific server. I got a chance, let me share you. Um, I got I got a chance to uh, analyze a malware, a virus, and uh, um, I was very happy after one and a half uh, um, hour, I successfully find that that uh, that is finding that virus is finding the time and zone and this is that that and, and sending my data towards that specific IP address that is located over there. But I I, I got out from my house for some work. When I come back after two hours, I see that was that virus was searching another IP address. Mean to say. Uh, initially, whenever we restart our computer, we say that is net is very slow. I don't know what is happening to them. Uh, my internet that is very slow. At the startup, is his uh, uh, that virus is collecting all the data and transferring to that specific IP that has been defined in that specific virus. So after after 15 minutes, and data transferred and uh, your uh, network is available now. You say it's very good, network is working now fine. Um, so uh, we, we are in a technological era and uh, we have to be very, very careful, careful about all these. Right. That's the key word, being careful, being on our guard all, all the time. Uh, yes. Hi, Manat Derby, for your intervention at this time, please. Go ahead, Hi, Manat. We can't hear you, there will be. We do understand uh, your microphone, your camera are on. However, there is no sound coming from your end. It may be uh, if you go down to the lower left corner, you see the microphone icon, there's a little arrow and you can switch to a different microphone. Yes. In the meantime, let's go to uh, Atanazi. Tenazi is gone, apparently. So Charles, Naimi. Uh, uh, good evening and thanks to the presenter. Uh, Rick Gonzalez spoke about uh, making internet connectivity <clears throat> and access for everyone. But how do you do that, especially in an environment where there are conspiracy theories? Let's say, uh, in a country that it's seeking to move maybe to the 5G network and supposedly learned people and even religious people are spreading, you know, various kinds of conspiracy. And so that it's a kind of resistance, you know, from the people, you know, against the government. So how do you enlighten people in such a kind of a situation? Thank you. Yes, hopefully just, uh, I think the majority can hopefully help to uh, spread education and rational thought uh, to everyone. And the scientific community can also play a part. Um, obviously being very, very close to the source could be harmful to, you know, to your cells, but um, you know, it, it, we're bombarded by particles just from the being outside in the sun. Uh, so uh, I think scientists can help us to educate those that might have those, those, those doubts. But that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Safakat, uh, I don't know if you have a comment on that, the 5G. Well, I just want to say that we have to, we have to give respect to all the, all the entities, while the mankind is on the top. 
and uh, just is nothing more. We should respect that. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, pretty much like you uh, mentioned it earlier, uh, Ricardo, we are also talking about the uh, goals of the United Nations for 2030. And of course, this uh, wireless communication uh, hope has to be embedded into uh, that series of goals set for about uh, seven years from now by the United Nations. And also you just added that uh, the entire communities and I was that in the plural form have to jump in and pitch in together so that everybody can uh, ultimately be beneficial of uh, wireless communication technology. I don't know if this is uh, the view of uh, Jeol Moleon, our next uh, attendee in line. Uh, the floor is yours, Jeol. Jeol apparently is not quite ready. Power, Aiden. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Uh, I really need to appreciate um, um, the presenter of this program and uh, maybe things that I've actually learned. Uh, my, um, my head is really much uh, uh, filled up with some of the things, with some of the thought, how can this, um, how can we bring this thing, um, this, this kind of, uh, this, uh, the, the technology to um, common people and how do we make the friendly part of it and, and do startup. My question is, do we have startups in this area and if there is um how would do one participate in in having a startup in this area and um and i would really i'm very much interested in the startups thank you the commercial use of it what is your view on that uh, Shabakat? Uh, it looks like we have lost Shafakat temporarily. Well, what, what we will do, Dr. Valsin, is um, <clears throat> since there's a lot of questions, and I think like Shafakat explained earlier, um, I think we could do several sessions related yes. to this, uh, which include the last question. Um, I want to make a note of it uh, because uh, I think that's a uh, key to everyone here. Okay, how can we make use of this knowledge or this technology entrepreneurial wise uh, as a startup, um, as an enterprise? Uh, and uh, I think there's many ways uh, and I, I'd love to invite him back. Oh, I see he's connecting now, let me add him back. Okay, I think he lost the connection for a moment. <laughs> so we can see there's definitely room for improvement in wireless communications, as yes. you can see. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's see, he's joining now. And uh, in the meantime, let me quickly clarify then for those who uh, keep asking the question as to uh, whether they're going to have a hand on this uh, overall presentation. The answer provided by uh, Dr. Gonzalez a short while ago is yes. Uh, give us a few days and our technology department will jump in and uh, make the entire presentation available within your student uh, portal. Uh, Angel uh, Miati, I've seen your hand up. Uh, I don't know if uh, we got the connection back with Chef uh, but uh, go okay. ahead, uh, Angel, ask your question, please. Okay, hi everyone. Okay, I'm Angel from Tanzania. I'm interested in um, when we are talking about technology and improving and um, looking at how are we going to make sure everyone is connected and uh, promoting the issue of wireless communication. But uh, is there, um, my question now to the presenter, is there a way on how to make sure that you have the cost implication that they go down? Because the issue here is internet is really expensive when it comes to some of our African countries. I really don't know if there's something that it can be done or it can be shared. I'm a journalist and I'd really love like to know how is our government going to 
to uh, to to make sure everyone is connected, but cheaply. That's a very very <laughs> very interesting questions. Unfortunately, Dr. Gonzalez or Shafakat, if you are paying attention to us. I don't think uh, we at uh, Atlantic International University can really answer to uh, what uh, every party uh, within your uh, territory uh, can do. Uh, of course, uh, I do hope that people from the government of uh, Tanzania, your country, Andrew, can uh, eventually do something to make sure wireless communication becomes available to every average citizen in your country. And so should it be in every other country around the world? I don't know uh, what you think, uh, Dr. Gonzalez. Sure. Um, well, uh, Shafakat is back. Uh, he's, he's listening. And that's a great question. And the only option that I could have thought of that I shared before was a company who is deploying these 5,000 square foot, which is about 500 square meter arrays in space. So most satellites in space, um, you know, they're, they're much smaller. They're, you know, they're three, four meters or something like that. This one's going to be, you know, 20 times that size. And they're able to beam down a broadband connection to perhaps 300,000 square miles. Uh, so it would cover basically the when a satellite goes over the United States, it would cover the entire United States uh, or half of the United States as it passes by. So with just 168 satellites, you would get global global coverage for a fraction of the cost, because normally to get that much coverage, you'd have to build thousands of ground towers in addition to having a satellite. Um, so. Um, uh, Shafakat, where I know we're running out of time, we're already seven minutes over, but uh, if, if you have time, um, we can answer that. And while you were away, we were actually already inviting you back. <laughs> so I hope that you can come back and, and uh, do another session with us uh, when, whenever you're available. After the session, I'll send you an invitation and uh, hopefully you can enlighten us on a lot of these questions that, that are coming up that require a proper, uh, perhaps hour more to, to clarify. I pretty much like you, Jess. Uh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead, uh, Chef Akat. Uh, sir, no problem. I am available. Uh, uh, but uh, we we'll have uh, we have another session after that. Uh, we will get into that. Look into. Thank you very, very, very much. And uh, it's very unfortunate again that uh, we could not. Uh, and so all the questions and some other questions also were coming up every once in a while. But uh, Shafakat Sirike has made a pledge that uh, he will make himself available whenever there is a need for another session. And of course, uh, we at uh, Atlantic International University uh, will be very happy to uh, schedule that session and uh, of course, right now we have 136 people in attendance and we've reached a number over 150 in the last few minutes. But uh, uh, this is a promise that we are making right now. And uh, Shafakat has agreed upon that pledge uh, from us that uh, we will get together again for another session about wireless communication a topic that is uh, well in demand across the globe, and we will be back. Uh, the last uh, word uh, from you, Shafakat, and uh, Dr. Gonzalez, to wrap this up. Uh, sir, thank you very much for all for being me and hearing me. And uh, uh, I will be available in the next session. Uh, anybody have uh, any security, uh, cyber security related questions and uh, whatever, I would be available for all, all the people. Uh, thank you very much, you all. Thank you again.
It's been a real pleasure, and uh, we do understand some of you are not very happy. You certainly would like to be with us for the next four or five hours. And personally, I would uh, agree to commit myself to that amount of time because the topic of wireless communication is indeed the critical one, the crucial one, because everything we do nowadays is heavily contingent upon communication. And because uh, we are moving away from wires, what is in the uh, getting momentum every single day is wireless communication. And of course, uh, something that we haven't mentioned is uh, even though we have the satellite to uh, grab uh, the uh, extent of the uh, communication, but also at the receiving end, we need some equipment. And sometimes uh, we're talking about uh, uh, developing or underdeveloped countries. Uh, it is not an easy task to uh, get ready at the receiving end. Sometimes we need electricity, we need uh, uh, generators, we need money, we need a lot of uh, finances. And sometimes this is a humongous task. And fortunately, we also have, we haven't talked about that, but maybe those are some other ramifications of the topic that will eventually be addressed uh, next time. Uh, the uh, solar energy that plays also a fundamental role in uh, helping with uh, the use of wireless communication. So many other things that uh, we eventually will uh, consider in our next presentation, and we're talking about one next presentation, we can have more than one because the entire life is built upon uh, wireless communication. So it's been a real pleasure. I would like to uh, have Dr. Gonzalez come up with the last word as we are getting ready to say bye-bye to everybody. Thank you very much. Dr. Gonzalez, for the last word. Thank you, Dr. Balsin. Thank you, Shafakat, for being our honored guest today. We'll love to have you back and students. Uh, good to see you again today. And we have lots of homework to do. The idea of these presentations is not to solve all of the questions, but to give us just enough information so that we can continue learning andragogically. So thank you, Charles, John, Imanon, Alex, Congratulations, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John, Ian, Karen, Danielle, until next time. Bye bye, Edward. Thank you. Join. Have a wonderful day.